got here at last. It's been a long, long time, but here I am, and jolly glad I am to be here at last. My name is Catherine Dobson, I'm a senior lecturer in the School of Engineering at the University of Hull and I'm delighted to be here in the exhibition hall of the University of Hull Library where currently there's an exhibition of Amy Johnson's Life in Pictures and I'm delighted to introduce Dr Sarah Pears who's the Vice President of the Women's Engineering Society. Hello Sarah. Hello. Um, what would you say is the role of the Women's Engineering Society? Well, the Women's Engineering Society is a membership society. Uh, we've been around since 1919 and our role has really been about supporting women uh, to uh, be engineers, to become technical leaders as well. So Amy Johnson was a great advocate and role model really for women in engineering, an enduring one, and as well as being president of the Women's Engineering Society uh, from 1935 to 1937, what, what difference do you think her achievements made? Well, at the time, huge difference. Um, by the time she became uh, president of the Women's Engineering Society, WES had been going for 15, 18 years by then. And I think there was a sense that uh, the, the organization was being ignored. Now, Amy Johnson was a glamorous celebrity at that point, but you know, so, so when she uh, became the president, um, she really drew attention to both the, the society but also the cause, the cause of women in, in science and engineering etc. Um, she was you know, not only glamorous, technically hugely competent, she was the first female grand engineer, but she was also uh, hugely courageous and so that, that combination made a big difference to people around her and, 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 and to WES. So with WES being at the forefront of um, encouraging more women into engineering, what particular initiatives are WES taking forward? Well, we've had lots of projects and schemes in the past, obviously, and lots of um, campaigns. But currently, what we're focusing on, the, the, the jewels in our crown, include, well, let's start with outreach. We do have some outreach. Uh, we have um, a programme called Magnificent Women, which actually started off as Magnificent Women and their flying machines because we wanted to celebrate people like Amy Johnson. Um, so, but that's now being broadened to include lots of women, lots of legendary women in all sorts of areas of engineering and, and technical areas as well. In addition, we also have a, a programme which is called MentorSet, which is a mentoring programme. It is a mentoring programme uh, primarily for, for women, uh, but the mentors can be men as well. And it is uh, really what we're doing there is partnering women uh, who want to take the next step in their careers or perhaps enter engineering and partnering them to people, very experienced people, who can then nudge them along and, and help them with hints and tips and, and so on. Uh, so they can be very short-lived uh, relationships just for a few months or they can go on for a little bit longer. That's been going since 2002 and we've recently restarted it with new funding from the government. Uh, from, from um, DEC as it was, but now BEIS. And um, not only that, we, um, we also partner with the Women in Nuclear group on that. Um, so women from in, in energy sectors have taken it on as their mentoring programme. But further than that, I, I mentioned the barriers around women in employment. Uh, one big barrier is women who take time out, um, you know, as, as many of us have to do at some point, or that men and women, but primarily women tend to have to do this a little bit more often. Um, and coming back into engineering can be very difficult. So we have done quite a lot of work around surveys, uh, surveying people to find out what their issues have been so that we can give that information to companies and to policymakers as well. But also we want to start off returnships, fellowships for women to get them back into, into engineering. 